it's surprising what's in your local woods wherever you are in the country you might have different things like you might have the pied flycatcher or the spotted flycatcher you might have green woodpeckers closer than you think you might even be lucky enough to have the lesser spotted woodpecker quite rare and if you see one of them i'll be jealous in fact if you see one of them put it on my facebook group which is northwest wildlife watchers in fact just put anything on there just join it's fine everyone's welcome as long as you behave i'm sure you will The wren. There's something up there now. Something up there. There's loads of things about. I think if you just stay still in one spot long enough, I mean, not obviously like out in the open, just like still enough, it takes about 10 minutes and the birds will get used to you being there. And when they get used to you being there, then they'll slowly start creeping back. Even there, they won't get too close, but you'll see a hell of a lot more than you think. And listening, looking, and it doesn't matter if your eyes aren't brilliant, you don't have to scan every leaf. It's like a broad scan that I do. And it's just looking around, just a general scan. And it, all it takes is a movement, a flicker, and sometimes it's just a leaf or blowing, like a single leaf flapping. But a lot of the time it's a bird. And that's how you discover them. Hang on, I've got a dog coming up here now. I'll get back to you in a minute. Our guys just walked past. Yeah, you'll just see a flicker. A lot of times it's a bird. I have actually been watching, gone zoomed in and watched a bird run with binoculars. Then I've seen another one come into the picture, but this is through branches like quite a way off. And then you go, oh wow, what's that? I didn't expect to see that. And it might be something really interesting. So it's always worth just stopping for five minutes, 10 minutes, and then just looking. And you'll relax and you'll get into it and you'll see more. And what's more is you'll learn more as well. Which way do you want to go, Toby? Do you want to go the Kingfisher way, which is about an extra five minutes on the trip? I'm just going to ask him. Or do you want to go the other way? The shorter route. Are we in a rush? I don't think he's in any kind of rush. I think if I was in a rush, I'd have to drag him because he's never going to be in a rush. He's always behind me. He used to be in front of me. I used to have to hold him back. We even had to get him a halty. But now, I need to get him a draggy. Oh, just invented something there. Where is he? Come on, lad. There you are, little. Come on, we'll go this way. Right past the water. I've got to put my lead again round here. Watch all that there, it's absolutely disgusting around here. Right, we're all right now. Right, you know where I am. I've got to be quiet again. But, I'm going to have to get some kind of recording device, I think. Other than the cameras. I want to record kingfisher noises. That you can hear now, I'll tell you for nothing, the long tail tip. <coughs> and they're going, they're going like little flocks from tree to tree. I can see them there, can you hear them clicking? There's one right there, yeah I can show you but uh, roughly there, but you won't see it very well. I think that might be some kind of alarm call, that. I've got one here, 
got some coming from this tree behind me and I've got some coming from that tree there I'm going to leave them if they're alarmed there's no point in me being here there you are, they stop now because normally you only ever hear them whistling well that was quite interesting that, I've not heard the like the stress call yeah like robins and wrens doing that, clicking click 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 and it's cause something is too close to something that they're looking after it, either at themselves or one of their own right you know black cap over there again only heard a bit of its song it's very easy to recognise, I know I've talked about it, but it is, it's very easy. Once you learn it. I was thinking, and oh, I never talked about things like, um, hang on a minute. I was thinking as well about birds that not everybody sees, but are actually everywhere. And one is called the gold crest. And I didn't see them for years, and the one main reason is it's not that they weren't there. It's just that I didn't think they was there, and I didn't know how to find them. Now I can tell you this with all on this is all right. I'll show you what I'm trying to get through at the moment. I've got the shorts on again. But my mate Paul. Big shout out to Paul. Give me these Bobby Dazzlers. I love my cam more stuff. Back to the gold crest. So I didn't believe I could. I didn't even, I didn't even think about it much to be fair. But then I started to see them. And then I learnt the calls, the things that they do. Hang on a minute, look at these. Canada's They're just drifting up and down stream this. I learnt the call to do. And it's very distinctive. But apparently people with bad hearing, and I know it sounds quite obvious why I say it, even though they can hear, they can't hear the high pitch of uh, look at the song they do. But Google it or look it up, learn it. And you'll find that they're just, they're everywhere. You'll hear it quite often. I mean, I've heard it in the middle of estates, housing estates, in like one tree. And they're like nesting ivy, things like that. Them types of trees. And feeding in there as well. And you know another thing, you can get quite close to them. They don't seem bothered by your uh, gold crest. Smallest bird in Europe and they're everywhere by the stream now so I'm just upping the voice a little bit come on Tobes away from that water look he's dying going I think he's given up I've had to put him on the lead Not seen these kingfishers yet, but that's fine. I mean, there's millions of other birds to see, isn't there? I know it's an exaggeration, but there's thousands then of other birds to see. And with limited time, I like try and see different ones. Um, a month or two ago, I saw and photographed my first bittern. Now that's related to the heron. And it's lives in reed beds, very highly camouflaged. And it just keeps still. And I didn't think I'd see one of them. I started to put the effort in, like a bit of research. A little bit of talking to people 
and I got my first photograph about six weeks ago. I went back and I just sat and waited and waited and waited. But after that, I was seeing them about every half an hour. Now, because I'd never seen one, the buzz I was getting out of it, I'm not, he's wrapped me up again. The buzz I was getting out of it was absolutely brilliant. So I went back again, because as a photographer as well, just take that off there, that little mark on screen. Hang on, come here, take him off the lead now. That's just it. Come on, Tops. Go on, lad. Born free. Right. <laughs> as a photographer, as well, I wanted to get a better picture because the ones I was getting were at distance. And I'm going to do a video about my camera and the lens, which is a Canon 7D Mark II and a Sigma 150 to 600. And I've optimised it best I can to get the best I can out of it. What I believe the best I can out of it. And I'm going to do a video and put some five tips on about that. Very short, they're coming soon. Give me a week or so and it'll be on. <coughs> but I kept going back for this bit and, and I was lucky enough to be in the right position at the right time. And I got what I call a flyby right in front of me. So with a Canon 7D, 10 frames a second, what you can do about 30 before it slows down, that's the only thing about it. I got about 20 to 30 shots. And not all of them razor sharp, but it only takes one good shot. And I got it. In fact, I got about four or five because I, I stayed and did it a couple of times. So I'm happy now. So I've left the bitten alone because it was that time of year to get on doing what it's doing. And that is raising its young. It doesn't want me there, Marvin, it does it? What a fantastic experience that was. I have been half tempted to go back, but I'm gonna move on to something else for a little while. And just see where it takes me. It's a, it's a fantastic hobby. I love it to bits. I love talking about it. And I'm gonna do more of these nature chats. So, if you're enjoying what you're watching now, just subscribe. I'm going to do loads, not just chats, but tips, hints, everything. Let's just see where that dog is. Come on! You can see him. There yeah. He, he's not as slow as he thinks he is. He cracks on with it sometimes. Do you want to go back the other way? I don't know how it changed the route up a bit for him. See, there is another route round the corner, but it's getting him near water, and I don't really want to do that. If it was a sunny day and I was off, I'd let him go in, but it's not, and I'm not off. <laughs> right. We have a red, a little bit of a stressy call. It's just gone down there, look who shadow. A lot of them are feeding the young now, aren't they? But to me, it's funny with birds. I don't know they're there. I don't know the younger there. <laughs> They'll let you know that the younger there and they're there. It's one of them evolutionary four pars <laughs> they let you know that there's something wrong and you're thinking hmm but if you're sensible you move on you get out of the way because you're actually stopping them from doing what they should be doing and that is feeding and protecting the young that's where he is now he's not doing bad is he Let's have a look. Anyway, getting back to what I was talking about in your local woods. 
So when I've done, gone in different woods in different par parts of the country, all right, for instance, I went to Snowdonia, just me and the wife on a day off. We wanted to walk up this nice path to see a waterfall. And it was called Watkins Path, that's it. Well, I did the first mile, it's beautiful there. And on the way back, I just got a feeling, I don't know what it was, I thought, this could be where like fly catchers are. I don't know why, because of all the old branches sticking out. And I do know that fly catchers, they'll perch on the end of branches and they'll fly out, get the fly and go back. They're like perches like that. And to my amazement, coming back down again, I saw a white flash of a bird and I thought, no. And it was, it was a pied fly catcher feeding it's fledgling i've even got a picture in fact i'll stick it on the end of this video and i thought wow and it just reinforces the fact that there's different things in different forage, uh, forests different parts of the country and i find that fascinating and there's a lot of the same isn't there there's you find like chaffinches and things like that a chap commented on one of my videos and he's living in Germany and he was telling me how common the black red start is. Now even though we get them over here, they're not as common as they are in Germany. And I find that brilliant. I've yet to see a black red start. I've seen red start. They like to live to me like woodlands bordering on meadow type places and even on the sides of hills and stuff like that so you'll see them if you look out for them i seen one earlier on this year when I say earlier on this year about four weeks ago a pair of them that was good I got a picture of it although far off and in fact I'll stick that on the end of this video as well so I'm going to treat you today for watching this far I mean, what I want, I'm sorry, I'm just looking over here because I'm at that point where I saw the other kingfisher. I'm always looking. Pulling funny faces. I have to squint my eyes sometimes to see. Nope, nothing there. So whenever you're in a woodland, don't just take for granted there's just blue ticks, great ticks, robins, wrens, blah there. There might be just something that you didn't expect to be there. And there's loads of warblers and wood warblers and and larks and everything. And pipits, what they I think more pipits are more like fields and stuff and hills. And it may be down here. There's more than what I actually think there is. You'd have to do a study, wouldn't you? Get a group here and do a study. Give each each person, say five or ten of you, a section of the woods that you watch for an hour once a week, I say. And after a few weeks, rack, um, put all your results together and a little map. That'd be interesting to do. And at this place here, it's absolutely massive. To me it is, for a local woods, it's quite big. And there's been told sparrowhawks have been nesting in one of these trees I'm near now. But not this year, last year. And I thought, wow. I even found the nest and I looked at it and I'm right near it now, the old nest. And I just wished I'd have concentrated a bit more last year because I would have just got my long lens, sat miles away, got there hours, sit there hours uh, early and just seen if I could see anything, get myself a picture. 
I mean, I'm talking 60, 70 metres away. Nothing like too close. You'd never do that. Where is he now? He's not doing bad, is he? He's a good lad. Come on, lad. Let's have a dog bye. Look at that, eh? About 13. Not doing bad. I think the problem, one of the problems with this wood and part of the wood I'm in now is a lot of the trees are the same species and they're not really fruit bearing trees or anything like that or they are, it's acorns and so that type of thing, you know, it's not berries I think that's what we're short of berry trees and it's so dense I'll just turn the camera around slowly I don't know if you can get a feel for that but it's so dense there's hardly any light touching the floor and that's when forest management is a good thing where they give enough room for one tree to grow a nice area around it and the next tree and the next tree and the next tree those trees will just all clump together over the years and they'll just be in competition and then you get long strangly trees because they're all trying to get through the canopy to get to be the first to get the light so you end up with sticky trees hundreds of them all within you know what I mean a few square like a few square meters like you know and then you get things like this and you see it a lot like that tree there it does fall down they get weak when they get weak because they can't get enough light they can't produce enough food and more prone to disease like anything right up we go that was a bit of a waffle wasn't it I'm going to leave this in a minute hope you've enjoyed it um, like I said, I've got some videos coming up and I'd appreciate it if you did subscribe because it all helps, doesn't it? It helps, encourages you and I'm not just talking to myself but uh, comment if you want, I'll try and answer every comment I always try and do that and uh, see you on the next video take care come on He's trying, bless him. Mm -hmm.